Hello, Steve here from T989 Refurb over on eBay and today I'm going to demonstrate to you the symptoms of a faulty power switch on a T-Mobile branded T989 uh, Samsung Galaxy S2 phone. Uh, so first you'll see I've got the battery removed. So first thing we're going to do is put the battery in. And I notice right away, before I even push any buttons, it starts up on its own. You'll notice here, now it starts to boot, and then it fails. Now it vibrates, vibrates, vibrates. So those are the, that's the most common symptom of a faulty power switch here on this T989. Some other symptoms to keep an eye out for would be if you have a very sensitive power button where you basically just brush your finger by and your phone will wake up or go to sleep. Uh, and a related symptom would be if uh, your phone will randomly turn off or turn on. Uh, that will also be another symptom that your power button is on its way out. Most of the tools needed to get this repair complete can uh, be easily had and you probably already have them if you are a person who might be willing to attempt this repair. So we'll start with a few of the necessary hand tools. Uh, we've got a screwdriver here with a size double zero Phillips bit to remove the screws that hold the phone together. We've got a pair of straight angle and a 90 degree uh, electronics tweezers for helping to grab the fine parts. For this repair uh, we're going to use uh, some solder paste which can be had online as well as a uh, water soluble uh, flux pen. After that we're going to be utilizing uh, some uh, q-tips as well as some isopropyl alcohol for cleaning off the flux and we're going to be using some standard uh, toothpicks to help us to apply the solder paste in the proper location. Also we're going to be holding the motherboard in place with a pair of helping hands. Also we're going to make use of some solder wick to help us remove the old solder and to clean up the pads before we apply the new solder. So the last two tools necessary uh, to talk about for this job is your standard conventional contact soldering iron. I think this is a 40 watt Radio Shack version. Nothing special about that. Uh, but what is special and what we need to talk about here for a moment is this unit here. It is a uh, tip it up so you can take a look at the face of it here. This is what they call a um, hot air reflow soldering iron. Uh, you dial in your temperature with this knob. You adjust your rate of airflow. You want to set it so that you have enough heat coming out but you don't want the air blowing so quickly that it blows the small parts off of your board. And last but not least this is your nozzle. Um, the hot air comes out of here and it melts your solder and uh, so that's basically how this unit works. Now that we see which tools are involved, let's go ahead and get this phone taken apart and uh, continue with the procedure. Keep your screws safe because they're small and they're easy, easily lost. Um, so in order to remove the back, uh, some places online will tell you, you need a special tool, but you have the tool you need right here. Grab underneath the speakerphone, gently wiggle it back and forth until all the plastic clips release and the mid-frame is easily released. Once we've got the motherboard revealed, we're going to take our 90 degree tweezers and we're going to lift up the front view camera, the headphone jack, 
the flex cable here for the screen and also for our soft touch buttons here on the bottom. Once those four are removed, go ahead and grab here. Like I said, wiggle again and the motherboard will come completely out. Now you'll see here, this is our culprit. This is the power button here. When you press it, in comparison to the volume buttons, it'll feel the same, so you'll think that nothing is wrong. But the fact is that the switch, the innards of the switch have failed. And that's the reason this unit needs to be replaced. So, first thing we're going to do, you'll notice on my helping hands here, I have some heat shrink over the tips of the alligator clips to help prevent doing any damage to my motherboard. The repair procedure officially begins when we uh, remove the old power switch. So we're going to do that using our hot air reflow tool and we're also going to come in here with our uh, straight angle tweezers. We're going to first go through and we're going to warm up the solder to melt it around all the edges. A few seconds here. You don't have to be particularly careful. The switch is going to be thrown away. So if you heat up the switch and melt it a little bit, that's not a problem. Just be careful that you don't apply too much heat to the surrounding electronics. Come in here with your tweezers. Very carefully grab hold and apply your final amount of heat. Just be patient. Be patient with it, it'll let go. Try not to force it. And once it's been removed, uh, the next step will be that we clear the way for new solder application. Uh, what we're going to do first is take some of our liquid flux uh, and we're going to apply it here liberally over the footprint of our switch. Next we're going to come in here with our solder wick. One thing I should mention though, might be kind of hard to see, there are three small passive components that set right next to the footprint of the switch. You have to be very, very, very careful not to disturb those because if you touch them for just a second with your soldering iron, uh, the heat will be transferred and they will be lifted off the board and it is nearly impossible to hand solder them back into place. So with that as a word of warning, let's go ahead and begin the process of the solder removal. There are two small through holes on the very edge of the board which act as a mechanical mount for this switch. And you need to clear all the solder out of these holes before you can continue. All right, that looks like we've done it there. So we've got all the old solder removed. The next step will be to utilize our isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip. And we're gonna come in here and we're going to very lightly brush the area. Brush it in real good to help remove all the flux. Flux is corrosive and over time it will eat through your circuit board so it's imperative we do get all the flux removed. The next step in the repair procedure is that we must apply a very thin coat of solder paste to the pads on the motherboard to be ready to accept our replacement switch. So what I do is I come in here and apply a very 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 small amount to the tip of my toothpick
and I apply it to each of the five solder pads. After the solder paste has been applied to all five pads on the circuit board, we're going to come through here with our replacement switches. We're going to remove one from the tape and reel packaging. We're going to grab it with our tweezers here. And we're going to carefully set it into place. Okay, once it's set into place with the tweezers, I like to come in by hand and feel that it has indeed fallen into the mechanical mounting holes which I spoke of earlier. Okay, the switch has been placed. The last step is to come back in with the hot air soldering iron and to reflow the solder paste. So let's go ahead and do that. Upon installation of the new switch, I want to be careful that I apply enough heat to melt the solder properly, but not too much heat so that I melt the new switch that we put on. I can't tell you exactly how much heat that is. It just comes with uh, practice and experience. Let's see, we'll heat it up a little bit on each side. Melt all around. Make sure the solder has melted completely. Okay, that should suffice. We're going to visually inspect our work. We're going to make sure that all the solder joints appear shiny. So we don't have any cold solder joints. We're going to come through and we're going to press the switch. Make sure it feels like it's actuating properly. Feels good. It looks good. So the next step would be to come in one more time with a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and wipe around the switch because there is uh, some flux inside that solder paste that we applied and it has melted off. So we'll make sure that we clean up any of the residual. We will go ahead and bring our uh, the rest of our phone housing around and we'll remount the motherboard uh, in the opposite of removal. Make sure you lift all your flex cables out of the way. Pop it into place. Make sure it's setting down. Soft keys, front view camera, headphone jack, and lastly the LCD screen. So all four of those are securely mounted again. Let's go ahead and bring in the mid-frame. We're just going to go around the perimeter, snap it all back into place. We won't worry about the screws for the moment because we want to make sure this works. Now we'll put in our battery and this will be the moment of truth. The phone did not turn itself on. I had to press the power button. We'll see if it makes it past the booting stage. Okay, it looks good. Make sure it boots up okay. There we go. So then go ahead and install your screws back in. And then go ahead and put your uh, back cover back on. And there you go. Uh, you have your T989 power switch repaired, uh, and you're good to go. Okay, please check out my store on eBay, T989 Refurb. I offer the switches for sale, and I also uh, will perform this procedure for your phone if this is something that you're not comfortable doing yourself. So again, thank you. My name is Steve, uh, and we'll talk to you soon.